Hi, Nitin. Can you hear me? Hi, Yoris. How are you? Uh, I can hear you. Yes, I can. I'm fine yourself. Uh, yeah, we're good. Doing good. So probably uh, for the interest of time, uh, thank you for joining uh, uh, for actual the space LK uh, episode four, where you will be covering the actual blockchain service for developers. So to who are actually joined, uh, welcome. You are as part of our. Uh, uh, session and uh, it, URS is uh, you, you can give an uh, overview uh, by yourself here so that would be and a brief introduction would be helpful for the team so I will just make you live uh, give me a second uh, I'll put you over to the live. okay all right um Thanks a lot, Nitin. Uh, so hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Juarez um, Barbosa Jr. And I work for Microsoft in Ireland as a, an Azure developer audience lead. And primarily I focus on the collaboration with the developer communities, uh, you know, so I'm talking about uh, the local meetups, uh, the third party conferences, uh, as well as the local hackathons, uh, workshops and so on. Um, today, uh, we'll have a session about uh, Azure blockchain. Uh, we are primarily targeted at developers. So I will be explaining uh, all the different uh, services and the tools and uh, also the options that you might consider uh, in a situation where you need to uh, implement or I would say uh, deliver a feature related to blockchain and uh, also the reasons why Azure is a good option for you. Uh, may I share my screen? Yeah, you can go ahead. OK, so let me do it. So uh, as you are actually uh, taking us through the sessions, right? So what you can do is if you have any questions, uh, you can actually use the Q&A on, uh, on the top. Then I can uh, forward that to your so I can uh, review them and uh, set it to your for uh, answering those questions, OK? Correct, yeah. Uh, we'll have a demo session here today as well, so, and after the, that, I, I'm more than happy to answer all of the questions. Sure. We have plenty of technical resources, so we have all, all the bits today. Yeah. Um, can you see my screen? Yeah, I'm just sending you live. Uh, OK, so yeah, it's up. OK, perfect. Just on sec. OK. Um, all right. So first of all, um, I would like to give you the opportunity to scan this QR code because I prepared many technical resources for you today. Uh, or you can also use the Zaka MS link. Uh, and uh, af after the session, uh, there will be one more opportunity, of course. But without further ado, uh, let's start them. As I said, my, my name is Juarez Jr. I work as a developer audience lead. Uh, also, we, you have here my email address, so feel free to reach out to me in case you have questions or ideas or related to blockchain. Uh, also, my Twitter and Medium handles are here. Uh, for example, on Medium, I have uh, many blog posts, uh, including the content that I'm going to present here today. Uh, and also, in case you want, you can also connect with me on LinkedIn. OK, so feel free. As I said, I'm a community uh, member and also uh, my job is actually to work with all the developers in the community. So please feel free to reach out and, uh, and that's all about collaboration. That's my job anyway. OK, the topic today is Azure uh, Blockchain for Developers. So I want to provide you a, a kind of crash course uh, considering blockchain and explain the reasons why blockchain is interesting and also important, uh, an important technology to consider and to have under your technical, uh, uh, under your belt and uh, as part of your technical skill set. OK. Uh, so what's blockchain? Uh, blockchain, uh, we can consider blockchain somehow as a kind of um, data store, right? But a different one. Because normally uh, when we talk about uh, storage or databases and, and those, they can be relational databases or SQL databases, for example. Um, you can, of course, store the data uh, and also I would say handle transactions and, and uh, promote uh, persistence and things like that. 
but you can also modify the data, you know, uh, but with blockchain, uh, it's a little bit different because we have one concept called immutability. OK, so blockchain at the end of the day, as, as the name um, says, it's a kind of a chain of blocks where you also have transactions uh, with the data sets. Uh, but the immutability, for example, let's say that you have one data set uh, recorded and have that on chain, it's impossible to remove the data. OK, there are different design patterns that you can implement, of course. Uh, and there's a way that somehow you can perform what we can call a logical deletion somehow, but no physical deletion at, at all. OK, on top of that, we have things related to security, uh, regardless of data at rest or data at motion. For example, if you are storing the data or, the, or if the data is uh, in transit, OK, uh, uh, considering the communication uh, among different systems, for example, uh, but everything uh, related to blockchain actually uses, I would say, cryptography uh, and there's a way to also establish uh, trust in terms of identity. There are different initiatives like self-sovereign identity, the, the distributed identity, DID and so on. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that uh, as well shortly. Um, blockchain is shared. As I, as I told you, for example, it's a, a database. Uh, we still have nowadays, for example, database clusters, and there are ways that you can implement, for example, scalability and distribution, you know, as uh, non-functional requirements, considering a given architecture. But the way that blockchain is shared is different because uh, at the end of the day, all the, the participants in the given blockchain network, they have a copy of what we call the ledger. And the ledger is this immutable uh, record uh, that can be shared. OK, so we can promote what we call the collective ownership of data. It's different because the traditional systems, uh, the classic systems, or we can call them depending on how you consider that legacy systems. Uh, they normally they have uh, the data is siloed, so different companies, they have uh, different databases and different systems. And when you have, uh, let's say, a transactions between uh, corporations A and B, for example, uh, you need to actually request the data, or send the data and, and, and retrieve the data. You know, and we have different protocols, for example, the HTTP protocol and a number of other communication protocols. Um, but at the end of the day, you don't have uh, the full visibility and ownership considering the data that you are interested in. With blockchain is different because when you join a blockchain network, actually there's a way to share the data. So all the participants, they can see uh, and they you can remove uh, intermediaries, for example, and they can see the data somehow in real time or near real time uh, fashion, for example. And the distributed aspect of it, uh, it's important as well, as I said, because the more uh, data and replicas you have, the better. Uh, the, it impacts a little bit the, the thing related to scalability, this functional, non-functional requirement actually. Uh, but distribution is also important because, as I said, even when you have a database, cl database cluster or uh, an application server cluster, for example, at the end of the day, you have uh, several different um, uh, integration points and the data is not, I would say, owned by all the participants. So that's why uh, blockchain implements, I would say, the very same data store principles, uh, storage principles, but in a different way. OK, and that's what I want to explain here today. I have uh, an, a, a demo session here uh, and also some samples, but let's explore a little bit more what blockchain uh, is good for. As I said, this, uh, this uh, data is stored in the ledger. Uh, we can consider it as a common ledger or a network wide ledger. OK, so all the participants, they can uh, access the same data and there are them two different or possibly three different ways that you can classify a blockchain network, OK? Uh, we can call it a permissioned blockchain or a permissionless blockchain or a private and public. Uh, the permissionless or public blockchain, let's put it that way, uh, is when you can actually join a, a blockchain network without uh, requesting a permission, uh, explicitly requesting permission to, uh, to join it. Uh, for example, uh, the Bitcoin network or the Ethereum network, uh, depending on um, on the specific um, 
implementation uh, that we are talking about. Actually, they are public ones because you just have to uh, allocate your uh, hardware resources. Uh, I would say your server or your hardware box, for example. Then you can go and install the, install the specific clients or the mining software, for example, and then you can join a network. You don't need uh, to be authorized. Uh, and, and that's the permissionless model, okay? Uh, or the public one. But the permission uh, need uh, model, for example, it's different because uh, you can start or found a network and we, uh, depending on the specific blockchain protocol, uh, you can uh, consider a different uh, um, roles. For example, uh, you can be, for example, the network founder, and then you can invite the other participants to join this network. Uh, but in order to join, you have to give them permission. Okay. Uh, in practical terms, you have to actually give them some uh, configuration um, files, for example, certificates. Uh, so that they can be authorized, that they can join the network as a participant. Uh, but uh, it's more controlled. It, it's not, I would say, open uh, uh, as you, when you compare it, for example, with the, the public one. You know, it's not a wild west in terms of uh, who can see the data, for example. It, and it's interesting because depending on the use cases, and this is particularly important for enterprises, for example, they don't want to disclose uh, all the information about their data and, and, and their transactions, for example. Let's say that you are a care manufacturer, for example, Honda, and you want to implement a blockchain network to, I would say, implement a supply chain, uh, use case, for example, or logistics uh, use case, uh, and you want to control, for example, when you transfer a given car from the, the factory to you, to the dealership, for example, uh, there are ways that you can actually track this asset uh, in, a, I would say, a private way uh, with the permissioned network. And, and blockchain is important for that because this data that you can store in the ledger, at the end of the day, we are calling about what we can call an asset or a digital asset, and this digital asset, it can actually play the role of uh, being a kind of digital twin. So it can represent actually a physical asset. So with blockchain, you can track things like, uh, for example, a container, you can track a car part, as I said, or a car, you can track a mortgage contract, for example, and there are a number of different uh, possibilities here. In practical terms, uh, we can say that blockchain is a technology that uh, all the, the, the situations and scenarios where you need more security, as I said, transparency, the collective ownership of data, and also uh, to remove intermediaries, for example, to expedite your business processes, you, a blockchain is a good candidate. Um, and that's why uh, I can say that all the existing business verticals and market niches nowadays, things like um, healthcare, for example, financial services, uh, manufacturing, retail, you know, we have a number of examples. Uh, when you consider the different business process, for example, and, and the use cases, you decompose that and you consider the use cases and the functionalities, all the points and, and all the different scenarios where you can, uh, I would say, remove some intermediaries to expedite the process, as I said, or you want to implement more security or more transparency, for example, we can use blockchain. Uh, so, as I explained here, blockchain is valuable, for example, when you need to cross boundaries. Okay, let's say that I have company A and B here, and we have different systems, and we need to implement transactions, business transactions. Okay, blockchain is good because uh, in a scenario where all the, the uh, parties, they can have a copy of that record, for example, uh, it's better in terms of uh, scalability, in terms of transparency, as I said. Also, you can eliminate what we call uh, in architecture styles, the single point of failures because uh, as uh, let's say we ha you have a network with 100 nodes, for example, uh, as all the nodes, they have the copy of the same ledger and the same data set. In case I have 40 nodes, uh, I would say that are uh, experimenting in an outage or they are down, for example, I still have 60 nodes that can serve and share the data. Okay, so uh, it, uh, I would say in terms of disaster recovery and, and uh, reliability, for example, it's better. Um, the, 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 in case you have a situation, as I explained, where multiple parties, they need to share the data, 
blockchain is more than appropriate and I explained that uh, with some examples, but we have more here. Uh, this verification and requirement is important because blockchain also can promote trust. OK, so there are ways that you can, for example, there are things nowadays like zero knowledge proof or where you can or, uh, for example, authenticate a given uh, a party, for example, without disclosing all the information about that that uh, that party, for example, or that client. Uh, let's put it that way. And this is interesting because the security solutions nowadays, they implement what we can call the triple way. Uh, authentication, authorization and auditing, for example. Uh, authentication, you know, you provide your a pair of credentials, your username and password or a, or a security certificate. Uh, but when you move to authorize uh, a, a given uh, entity, for example, uh, normally the systems they implement, the security systems, they implement a now and nothing approach because, for example, they need in order to give you access to a given system, they, the system has to retrieve the information about your profile, your uh, namely your user role or, or uh, the group that you belong to. OK, and then all the information is retrieved, let's say, from a, an, a kind of LDAP server, let's say, or uh, a backend. Uh, 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 user repository that can be a database or relational database as well. It doesn't matter, you know, but uh, what we I said, for example, in terms of uh, trust and verification uh, with blockchain and zero knowledge proof and self sovereign identity, you can selectively uh, inform uh, the the specific uh, subsets of data uh, considering your identity that you want to 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 share and disclose. So let's say, OK, I want to authenticate. Uh, but I just want to provide my email address, for example, and I don't want to, to provide my uh, specific internal ID or I don't want to provide my uh, home uh, address, for example, and things like that. With blockchain, there are ways that you can implement that. And these thing related to the intermediaries, as I said, uh, several different use cases where, for example, you can expedite the processes and you don't need actually to, in order to, uh, I would say, uh, conform or uh, commit a transaction. You don't need to involve many different parties uh, the uh, using the traditional way with uh, request and response cycles, for example. Uh, you can also remove some intermediaries uh, because uh, the way that you implement the blockchain, as I explained, you know, this collective ownership of data and actually the transparency that you have and also the different ways that you can implement a given network gives you the possibility actually to simplify the business processes. So let's move here and just talk one a little bit more about the different use cases because this is a developer session. So I want to start to explore the the the, the cool technical stuff that we have here today. As I said, you know that's why it's important for you to learn blockchain because uh, it's gaining traction first. For example, Gartner uh, they uh, recently they have different uh, research papers and things like that where they are saying that uh, by 2030, for example, the the market for blo blockchain the blockchain technology will be something uh, around 3.1 trillion dollars. OK, so as I said, we can consider blockchain as the new network. OK, that's why we call the blockchain applications the Web 3.0 apps or the distributed apps, uh, because this blockchain network is what we can call the new uh, world computer or the new uh, world operating system. Uh, the the good thing and the interesting thing with blockchain is not it's not only a, an opportunity for you to modernize the use cases, but you can also implement something that we can call the smart contract. Okay, the smart contract is um, I would say uh, a kind of uh, computer or software contract, actually the same way that as any other software component. But the nice thing uh, with smart contracts is that is that you, uh, you can deploy them to a given uh, blockchain network and they can start to somehow uh, watch the context so they can uh, run autonomously. OK, so that's why it's a smart contract. Uh, and this is smart contract that there are ways uh, to implement and you can uh, um, depending on the protocols and the frameworks, you can use the traditional programming languages, things like Java, Golang and JavaScript, for example. Uh, but uh, other protocols like the, the Ethereum protocol, you can use uh, the Solidity language is a kind of specific language, a domain specific language, DSL. Uh, 
um, but uh, smart contracts, they are really powerful because blockchain is just one bit when you consider what we can call the exponential technologies or the emerging technologies. Um, you, we have the Trinity emerging technologies. We can say AI, blockchain and IoT, for example, when you combine and you consider uh, the intersection and the synergy uh, among all those uh, technologies, you know, there are ways that all the, the different business verticals that I have here. Now you can think about ways where you can innovate and actually implement uh, new uh, use cases uh, and, and provide, I would say, the key differentiations that are so important nowadays. Uh, this synergy is interesting as a, one example. Let's say I have um, one example here, it's about a Starbucks and a kind of supply chain uh, application that they implemented with the Azure blockchain and they can track the 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 beans uh, from uh, farm to the table, for example. Uh, you can see here, you know, so it gives all the participants, as I said, full visibility considering uh, the the different uh, contract phases, for example, uh, the different uh, status uh, when you consider the supply chain and the different checkpoints. Uh, and also it's good for you to expedite and give transparency to all the participants. You can see here, for example, as I said, you can try you can track uh, the coffee beans from uh, the farm to the table to your customer, you know, and you can provide the customer, for example, an application and they can also check if uh, uh, the the origin of uh, a, a given um, coffee bean, for example, this is interesting, not only in uh, considering this use case here, but any supply chain use case, for example, because you know, one problem that we have nowadays is uh, considering uh, counterfeit products, for example, uh, and, and piracy and things like that. Um, so well, with one example li like this one here and not only talking about blockchain, but IoT, right? You can also combine that with an IoT sensor, for example, let's say that you need to also track the temperature of a given container, you know, uh, and you can combine that with uh, location based services, for example, so you can also have GPS data. So uh, this combination as one example, blockchain and IoT, for example, you can implement, uh, I would say, a, a, a reliable track and trace uh, application and solution. So, and give all the participants, you can see here, the farmer, the carrier, the manufacturer, uh, the distributor, the retailer, and the customer, everyone they can track and they can understand and make sure that uh, what they are buying, for example, uh, is actually a product of good quality. Uh, the same thing, for example, let's talk about, I would say, pharmaceutical companies. You can track medicines. So there are a number of different um, business verticals, as I said, that uh, you can apply in blockchain. One more example here, that's, that's actually a Microsoft uh, case. Uh, where Xbox is using uh, blockchain to actually work with the publishers, uh, considering the games, you know, and, and royalties. Uh, and it's, uh, as I said, because uh, at the end of the day, this contract here, you can consider that as an asset as well. As in the previous example, you know, the container or, or, or the bags with the, with the coffee beans that you are transporting. You can have, for example, RFID tags and you can scan that information. Uh, and also uh, perhaps from, uh, uh, as I said, a temperature sensor or a, an on off switch, considering uh, if, if the box is closed, for example, and you can record that uh, in, in on uh, and have that on chain, you know, and remember blockchain is immutable. So there's no way actually to modify the data. And, and that's interesting because with traditional relational databases or NoSQL databases, let's say I have a database table, uh, one database and a database table, uh, address, the address table, for example, and I have my address there. Uh, and my house number is there uh, recorded as number 45, but ac the actual number is 80. So I should go and update it. With a SQL database, a relational database, for example, you can run a SQL query and you can update that record. With blockchain, as I said, it's immutable. There's no way to do that, right? So in order to actually include the right information, you need to compute uh, uh, and to run uh, new transactions and compute a new block and then append a new block to the chain. Okay? OK, and with that, you have the full traceability considering the life cycle of this given asset, for example, and that's good because it, it can also help in this 
dispute situations, for example, okay, where you need to prove and you need to retrieve the entire life cycle of a given asset. With blockchain, you can implement a, a use case like that. Uh, so that's why blockchain is so interesting in terms of security, as I said, this transparency, collective ownership of data, uh, traceability, and a number of other uh, uh, features. Uh, this case with block, with um, Xbox here, you can see they shared that uh, ledger data, you know, so we have a contract as the given asset. OK, and, and then you can give the visibility to the content developer, uh, the, the publisher and also Microsoft, uh, you know, all the particip participant organizations, they can uh, actually access and see the same data. Uh, we have a number of partners and customers here uh, considering solutions. You know, we, we have airline companies, for example, uh, we have banks and one mistake, for example, some people, people uh, they think that blockchain is good only for financial services. No, as I said, uh, all the business verticals, all the market niches, you know, healthcare, anything you can think about ways where you can apply blockchain to actually uh, improve and expedite the business processes. Um, blockchain, uh, as I said then, you know, uh, the problem with blockchain is that uh, it's really complex because you, you need to master things like, uh, as I said, security, uh, distributed computing, uh, programming languages, um, possibly DevOps as well, because some frameworks, they use Docker containers, uh, possibly depending on the number of nodes and the uh, the the number of participants that you want to have in your blockchain network, you will need to use a uh, container orchestrator like Kubernetes, for example. Uh, so blockchain is a complex technology. It's powerful, but it's complex. So that's why it's important to have what we call manage a managed blockchain approach or solution. Uh, and with Microsoft, we have the Azure blockchain service. OK, because you can somehow abstract all this complexity. Uh, and you can use a managed solution so all the the different components they are provisioned automatically and transparently uh, so you can just go and implement your solution uh, and focus specific, specifically on implementing your smart contract we can consider this smart contract as the the server side component okay uh, like in a traditional application server as i said but uh, we also have the client applications, OK? And there are different views. Um, primarily, and we can say that a blockchain application, we have uh, those two main components, OK? Apart from all the underlying uh, infrastructure and the, and the plumbing that you need, OK? You need to implement the logic for your smart contract in order to promote all those uh, characteristics that I talked about. Uh, and then implement a client application and that can be a mobile application or a web application, Android, iOS or browser application. OK, but you need to use specific libraries. OK, some blockchain platforms and solutions, they offer a REST API uh, because REST is somehow the de facto way to, uh, I would say, um, promote integration. Nowadays, we are talking about the HTTP protocol and possibly JSON as the data format. Uh, but you need to, depending if you are talking about it, uh, and I can talk now about the different frameworks. We have things like Ethereum, we have Hyperledger, uh, and Hyperledger Fabric as the main framework. We have Corda. Um, all the different protocols, they have specific clients. Some solutions, uh, considering the cloud side or, or the, the server side of it, you can also use a REST API and the smart contracts, depending on the technology. As I said, Ethereum, you need to possibly use Solidity or Viper, a new language. Uh, but Hyperledger, for example, you can leverage your existing uh, skills and, and, and your team and your technical skills, for example, because you can implement the smart contract and use things like the, the Java language and uh, Golang and also JavaScript. OK, um, let's move here to talk quickly here about the, our vision, considering the Microsoft's approach to blockchain. Uh, we don't consider uh, uh, the approach where we would implement a proprietary ledger. OK, there are some companies uh, doing that um, at the minute. Uh, I would say mainly financial um, institutions. Uh, so we are ledger agnostic. We want to give you, I would say, uh, uh, 
the broader set of uh, uh, protocols and all the technologies so uh, you can have choice, okay? There's no need, depending on the solution, to use crypto or altcoins because with Bitcoin and Ethereum, for example, you, you need to, uh, I would say, uh, pay for the transactions. Uh, in a permissionless uh, um, scenario, okay, so you need to have uh, Ether, ETH, or Bitcoin, for example, so you can pay and also uh, that transaction can be successfully uh, implemented and executed, you know. Um, in, and the focus here is on enterprises and, and governments, uh, we can say, but um, I would say any use case, uh, also startups, of course, where you see an opportunity to, as I, uh, as I said, not only implement a new blockchain application from scratch, start from scratch, but let's say that you have a, uh, an existing PAT application or Ruby application, we can also augment uh, and also implement some functionality that would give you the opportunity to promote all the characteristics that I talked about. Uh, Microsoft loves open Open source, so we have a number of open source ledgers, of course, uh, and it's not only about blockchain. You know, not only the core protocols or frameworks, as I said, Ethereum or Hyperledger or Corda. We also give you a number of tools. For example, we, uh, we have extensions for VS Code. You know, the the IDE that developers love. Uh, and also an entire ecosystem in terms of partners of uh, industry solutions as well. We have what we call the the, the blockchain Azure work uh, Azure blockchain workbench, uh, where basically you can provision a number of, of other different components like an IoT hub, for example, uh, and different other component other components that you can use actually to implement and to accelerate your solution. Uh, just to give you a glimpse of different options here, as I said, Hyperledger is an open source framework. Actually, uh, there is a foundation called the Hyperledger Foundation and under, uh, under the Linux Foundation umbrella, so it's open source, of course. Uh, and under the Hyperledger uh, Foundation, we have a number of projects like Fabric, the main blockchain framework, uh, somehow uh, considering enterprise solutions uh, and the main cloud players nowadays, they only implement Hype, uh, Hyperledger and the Fabric protocol. But with Microsoft, you can see you can also use Corda, you can use Ethereum, for example, and we have a number of uh, we, uh, Quorum. We have a number of other choices here with uh, and three different approaches. OK, we have the managed blockchain. OK, the highest level of abstra abstraction. So you have IS, PASS, uh, and normally SaaS, okay, so you can consider it uh, in between uh, PaaS platform as a service and SaaS. We call it BAS blockchain as a service, but we also give you the opportunity to orchestrate your own containers in case you want or use uh, the VM approach, okay? Let's say that you are more, uh, I would say, comfortable with managing VMs and things like that. All the different protocols that we have here, you can go to our marketplace and you can um, uh, start a VM and deploy the specific framework and you can manage it. So uh, we, we are flexible in case you want to abstract and as I said, focus only on implementing the high level components, your smart contract, uh, the client applications and then move to deliver your solution. We have this option so you can see here, for example, the cloud is open. We have open source components. Uh, it's a hybrid approach. Uh, we have tools uh, uh, also support in terms of identity and security. Um, uh, middleware support, you can combine that with the number of different Azure services at all levels. As I said, infrastructure, platform and service. Uh, Off-chain integration, confidentiality, compliance it is quite important because you know Azure, we implement um, a number of different, uh, uh, we, we are compliant to a number of different regulations. We, are, we have all the uh, most important in, in the proper uh, certifications, you know, in terms of security and compliance. Um, and uh, the approach, as I explained, you know, in case you want to consider a dev test mode, you can run a node uh, with VS Code, for example, and you can use your own uh, laptop, your dev workstation. 
uh, but in case you want to, I would say, advance and implement a single node or a multi node approach uh, to have an integration or a development environment, and then implement uh, the uh, production system and, and the final solution, uh, and also deliver the multi member, multi org approach. Uh, so it's all about uh, implementing and providing you uh, the platform. The, all the main frameworks, uh, the freedom of open source, uh, proper security, the, the development tools so you can uh, achieve the uh, desired productivity and also modularity. Uh, and the, the uh, result and the outcome is that you can accelerate your solutions. Of course, you can reduce cost and, and your time uh, considering the implementation and time to market. Uh, connect our blockchain application to a number of different services because blockchain alone is not so useful because it's a data store somehow. It's not only a data store as I explained, but you can consider blockchain as a kind of middleware. You know, you need to leverage and, uh, and reuse external data. So the integration side of it is um, complex somehow. Some uh, ecosystems and protocols like Ethereum, for example, we have a concept of something they call an Oracle. Uh, it's a kind of integration component, but with Azure, you we have the data manager, for example, uh, considering the blockchain service uh, that you can use, and we have a number of different adapters, you know, uh, and you can then retrieve the data from different data sources and have that on chain uh, in order to exercise your smart contracts. Um, so, uh, as I said, the, the advantage uh, considering the approach here and if you want to uh, use the service that I'm about to um, uh, present here, we'll have a quick demo. Uh, you can just focus on the writing your business logic, okay, your smart contact and your client application or modify an existing application and augment and extend it, okay? And all the other blocks here, considering the infrastructure, uh, things like, let's say, if you want to implement Hyperledger, for example, it has a number of different uh, specific nodes. Uh, let's say you need to implement the certificate authority node, the, the chain code node, you know, the, the, the peer nodes, and, and also the, the other node, and, and, and so on. A typical solution just for testing, let's say that you want to, uh, to have uh, the network founder uh, organization and a couple of orgs, okay, you will need something around 20 Docker containers. But let's say that you want to create a, a, a full-fledged on a blockchain network, a real world one with a hundred or a thousand partners, you know, providers, partners, customers, uh, all the different players considering your uh, uh, core business and, and this scenario, you will have an explosion considering the number of components that you have to manage. And not only that, number of IP addresses, number of um, ports and also certificates, uh, all the blockchain uh, protocols, normally you, you have to deal with a number of different uh, specific command line tools, okay? So that's why it makes sense for you to have the manage it approach and use uh, with specific, I would say, user-friendly dashboards. Uh, so, uh, before the demo here, just to talk a little bit about what you see. Okay, as I said, we have the blockchain service at the best. Blockchain as a service approach. Okay, the highest level in terms of ab abstraction. Uh, we have VM templates, of course. Uh, so, you can also uh, deploy a blockchain network and I would say um, implement it, but you want to keep it at the IS, the infrastructure level. Uh, we, 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 we give you this option. We have the workbench, as I told you, uh, with a quick setup, you can provision a number of uh, satellite services, Azure services, uh, but also you can work with things like uh, Power Apps, for example, and so on to implement your blockchain use cases. So it's a kind of accelerator. The blockchain dev kit, it's a VS Code extension that you can use. Uh, and we have a number of different uh, code samples that you can also use uh, considering the integration and implementation with different services. Let's say you need to implement messaging with Twilio. We, we have uh, this uh, capability and code samples for that. Uh, blockchain tokens, uh, there's a new initiative uh, to implement what we call the, 
the uh, digital tokens. Okay, so a number of different cryptocurrencies, or uh, depending on how they approach blockchain, you know, they are implemented as tokens. There are different uh, uh, tokens, you know, utility tokens, and and, and so on. Uh, I would say it, it is beyond uh, the, the scope of this talk here today to talk about that. Uh, but there's a new initiative called uh, the TTI, uh, the Token Taxonomy Initiative, and uh, the TTF, the Token Taxonomy Framework. And Microsoft is also uh, collaborating in the scope of uh, an organization to implement this standard. Um, and the marketplace, as I said, you know, uh, all the, we have more than 40 different blockchain uh, frameworks and protocols uh, available. Uh, that you can go and uh, uh, I would say instantiate from our marketplace and deploy your solution. So uh, let's move now to uh, work considering the uh, the demo here. Um, all right, so uh, yeah, let me start my VS code here. Uh, but before that, uh, maybe just to give you a glimpse of what I talked about. Uh, we have here, uh, this is our blo blockchain page, okay, where we present the different solutions. As I said, the, the, the BAS service, the blockchain service uh, with, man with the managed approach, the workbench uh, and the dev kit. The workbench, I have it here. Uh, no, actually uh, here. Yes, here. Okay, so the workbench, as I told you, you know, uh, you have a pre-built uh, infrastructure that you can reuse. This diagram here will give you, uh, I would say, an idea considering the different components that are provisioned along with the blockchain service, you know, uh, automatically. So we have here, for example, the IoT hub, as I said, service bus. Uh, we have here storage. We have the Azure Key Vault. You know, so it's a way that where not only the blockchain service will be ready for you, but also all the different uh, services uh, that you can consider depending on your data sources and the use cases that you want to implement. Let's say that you need to, I would say, ingest data from IoT devices. Okay, that will be readily uh, available and integrated with our blockchain service. Um, this one here is the development kit. As I told you, it's a VS Code um, uh, extension that you can use to create and, and implement your smart contracts. It's quite useful because we have a number of specific uh, tools, for example, that you can use from the command line. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do both here today. Uh, yes, but uh, we have Truffle, for example, in Fura, uh, but you can do everything from VS Code with an, uh, a couple of uh, uh, mouse clicks. So it's better for you. The blockchain service is the one that I talked about uh, and I have it here. I will show you also how to provision it. Uh, so the, the first thing actually I would just, I would like to show you how easy it is to, uh, to provision the, the blockchain service. So let's say I want to create uh, a different uh, uh, member here uh, and the protocol uh, considering the example here is, uh, is Quorum. OK, so I have this instance here. Let me just refresh to see if the session is still valid. OK, so you just click create. Oh, this is the Azure portal. You know, I select blockchain here and the blockchain service, right? Um, OK, so I, I'm, I'm going to create a blockchain member. Uh, OK, you can select your subscription as usual. Create a, a resource group, OK? Uh, no tricks here, uh, as with uh, everything uh, that you can uh, deploy um, to Azure. The protocol here, uh, I, I'm going to use Quorum. Quorum is a kind of fork considering Ethereum. Uh, they modify uh, the 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 uh, the GAF, the GoLang client. Okay, uh, I'm going to create a new consortium here, and the consortium in blockchain is the thing that you use to aggregate the different uh, business players, as I explained, the network founder, uh, the participant organization, your partners, your customers, your providers, and so on. Okay, uh, the member name for this uh, node member here. So let's specify one, uh, one member name here. Um, for example, this one here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one member password here. Yes. Uh, 
uh, you can uh, have a choice here considering the environment. Uh, for example, I'm going to provision a very basic environment here with uh, just one validator node and uh, one, uh, one transaction node. OK, uh, these are the different nodes considering the specific protocol quorum. Uh, this session today is just an introduction, but I will talk about a series of sessions that we are organizing where I will explain the different uh, frameworks and the different protocols and also how to implement the smart contracts with all the details and the different programming languages. So let's select basic here. And at last but, but not least, uh, I need to provide one password for the um, transaction node as well. OK. Um, yes, I can. OK, everything is OK. Um, and it's as simple as what you are seeing here. OK, no tricks, as I said, with a couple of uh, different tabs, considering this wizard here, you can provision a blockchain network. Uh, it is taking more time than expected. All right, so I can click create here and uh, the provisioning will uh, start as usual. But I actually prepared a couple of different instances here, so I have them here uh, that I can show you just to give you a glimpse of what will be the final result. But possibly we will use the new uh, member to start the project from scratch as well, because I then I have a uh, a demo ready here in VS Code for us, but I want to also show you the quick steps on how to do it. So let me show you this member here, for example. OK. Um, and the, uh, uh, you can see here. Uh, so the nice thing, as I explained, for example, is that you have a number of different um, metrics and dashboards here, you know, with the traditional open source approach to blockchain. Uh, in order to extract all the information about transaction blocks and so on, normally you have to cope with a number of different command line tools, you know, with uh, I would say several different parameters, so it's not so simple. OK, um, and you you have here, for example, uh, ways that you can, as I explained, use the data manager. And by the way, I will have a specific session about the data manager and how to use it to uh, uh, reuse uh, and integrate with external data sources. OK, um, and the, the transaction node here is here. You can also implement a monitoring, for example. Uh, you can uh, integrate with Azure monitor and so on. So. What you are seeing here, you know, with just a couple of steps, for example, you can provision uh, a, a blockchain member and you can extract all the metrics. You, you can watch and track the transactions. OK, and but this is the back back, back, uh, back end view of it. Of course, you have to implement a user friendly uh, GUI, you know, your application, as I said, uh, the mobile application or the web application. But let's uh, actually run now a demo here and I have VS Code and I installed uh, the, the dev kit as I told you, you know, uh, and I have one sample project here. Uh, this is the, the common structure. You have this folder here uh, where we have this solidity file. It's a kind of hello world here and solidity. You can hit the dot so uh, extension here. This is the specific language uh, for Ethereum and Quorum, and, and Quorum that I talked about. OK, this is a very simple smart contract. So but uh, I have the blockchain network here, but let's say I can refresh and I can see the same member that I have there. It's here. OK, um, and I can, for example, in, in case you want to connect to that network, it's so simple. You can just come here and click connect to network. OK, select Azure blockchain service, your subscription. You know, and it will list uh, different networks here. For example, I let's say that I want to connect to this one here. OK, the 2020 uh, and I select here um, the the consortium and I have it connected here. OK, uh, so you can see how easy it is to implement and solidity uh, in order to um, compile this smart contract here. It's just about uh, right uh, this right click here, build contracts. Uh, you can see here uh, the blockchain uh, output. OK, the compilation is happening here. Uh, and by the way, this is the comment that you have to run uh, from the command line. Um, it's taking a little bit, so yeah, yeah, OK. OK, compiled successfully. The same thing uh, with the deployment. OK, let's say that I want to deploy my smart contract. OK, right click here. 
the same smart contract, deploy contracts, okay? I select the target network, okay? Uh, that's actually uh, the result of uh, connecting from here, uh, where from where I can manage all the networks. I select it here, and the deployment uh, process starts. You can see the very same command here. I can re run it from the command line as well, just to give you an idea of how easy it is to use it from VS Code and the things that you have to pay attention uh, to when you are doing it from the command line. Um, provided that everything uh, is OK, it will be deployed. Uh, yes, it's going through the compilation phase again. Yeah, uh, there are some checks in terms of versions and things like that, also gas and so on. Um, Gas is uh, somehow the thing that you, depending on the, the framework of Quorum and Ethereum, for example, you need to pay uh, in order to execute a given transaction or deployment, for example. Um, yeah, it's replacing my smart contract. It's replacing the, the version that was deployed there. I still have 10 minutes, so I think, yeah, uh, it will be more than enough to finish this. Uh, okay, deploy successfully. And now uh, the last step, for example, you can also just to show you how to actually call it from the command line. Okay, so I have here, I prepared the comments here just for the sake of agility. Uh, so let's call it. First thing I have to connect to my uh, blockchain network. Uh, I can do it here from the command line. Okay. Uh, it will start a specific shell. Um, I hope. Uh, let me see. It should work. <laughs> yes, perf. Uh, what's that? Configuration for available networks. So I, also, I think I used the wrong one. Where is it? Uh, not one. Twenty one. No, that's that's quite correct. Let me try again. Just one thing. Let me see because my my connection was not so. Yes, no, it's running. Um. Yeah. Yes, OK, it it worked. Uh, so you can see the shell here now uh, and then we can run some blockchain transactions. OK, as I said, it's a kind of a data store. So let's first uh, retrieve the standard data set that we have there as part of this smart contract. OK, the one that I deployed uh, so I can do it here and a measure a message will be echoed. Uh, yeah, hello world, All right? But let's modify it now, OK? Um, so I want to set a new message here. This hello um, meetup. Um, OK, perfect. And then I can confirm that it um, is really uh, recorded over there. Perfect, yes. So you can see that the message that I sent, I've just retrieved it retrieved it from uh, the uh, blockchain network, uh, so it is there on chain, right? Uh, just to mention, uh, everything I'm, I'm going to try to use five minutes more here just to show you how quick it is to start a Solidity and blockchain project uh, on VS Code, but all these steps and everything that I have here actually, uh, as I said, and I'll give you one more opportunity to scan uh, the QR code and also uh, uh, this is my Medium uh, blog, uh, page, so uh, I have all the steps here uh, as a kind of uh, series that I created, you know, with all the steps to implement this demo here today, including uh, the things related to testing the smart contract and so on. Uh, here. Yeah. OK, the second part is here as well with all the steps and everything that I showed you here, you know, also all the dependencies you have to install, for example, Node.js, NPM, Git, Python, Truffle, the 
the, and, and Ganache, the, the CLI, the, the tools that I talked about, you know, but all the steps, they are detailed here, including a sample smart contract. And uh, at last but not least, also the different uh, steps that you need to follow to actually call the smart contract, as I've just, no, this, not this one, I think. This one here. OK, so you can see here I modified this smart contract and I added a couple of functions to echo the messages as well. So everything is here. OK, um, but let me try to let's check the um, the instance that we uh, it's still being provisioned. Um, OK, uh, we can try to maybe create a new, pro new, new project here and just um, connect to the, to the existing instance that I have. I would like to connect to the new one, but uh, it, there's no problem actually. So let's close this folder here. I will create one uh, folder, a new folder here uh, with the new demo project. Uh, just to give you a glimpse of what I'm talking about. Let's call it uh, BC, um, BC demo um, 4. OK. All right. OK, so on VS Code, um, Let's open it. Um, two, two, two. Yeah, let's open this one here. And yeah, it will trigger. Uh, let's say that now I want to create um, a new um, solid project. OK. Oh. Yes, OK, this one here. It takes a while because it's loading the dev kit. Hmm. Let me see here. Oh, not yet. Let me try again here. Um, I think that was too fast. OK. Oh, yes, perfect. Yeah, I can select this folder here. OK. Yeah, it's creating the new project here. And you can see the structure here now, right? And the smart contract is, is here, the sample one, OK? Uh, we can modify it, of course, but as soon as it finishes here, uh, well, let me actually modify it here just to provide um, the couple of additional methods first, OK? Uh, because I want to actually show you again the transaction. OK. Um, yeah. I also need to fix something related to the um, version here. Let me just copy this one here. And yes, and this one here as well. No, I don't need that now. Okay, save all. Um, well, it's still creating the, the project, but after that, there are two things. Yeah, it's it's okay now, right? Okay, so you can see that actually the only configuration that I have here is considering the local uh, uh, development environment, because as I told you, I can deploy this smart contract to um, my local uh, development environment, but uh, my target here, and I just want to actually deploy it to the remote Azure blockchain service. So let's update it here, uh, and then let's uh, disconnect. Okay, and let's connect to that network again. Um, okay, so I select Azure blockchain service, uh, my subscription, uh, the target um, resource group, uh, consortium, 
Uh, OK, it will be connected here. Let me confirm. OK, perfect. Uh, now I can uh, compile it. Let me just confirm that everything is OK. Yes, I can compile it again. OK. And from here you can implement any smart contract with Solidity, you know, so it's really easy for you. Uh, I can redeploy this smart contract here later from the command line in case you want. Uh, yeah, but we are at the very top of the hour, but anyway, um, the output I can see it here now. OK, it compiles su successfully, so now I can deploy it. OK. Same thing, I select the target network, OK? Uh, it, it's, uh, it's needed to create a kind of a mnemonic here uh, just to, uh, because it will create one uh, file uh, with uh, many keywords. This is related to the security side of it, OK? Uh, I'll provide more details about that considering the, the upcoming sessions, as I said. Yeah, but this smart contract is being deployed now. Uh, just to finish uh, considering the content here today, uh, I prepared, as I said, this page here first where you can uh, provide your information. It's, you just need 10 seconds. You know, it's about your name, your email address, and the company that you work for, and you can engage in, uh, with our uh, developers uh, newsletter. It's good for you because you can get to know about all the events that we are organizing, not only in Ireland, but also worldwide. And I prepared some resources here for you with the Azure blockchain, the, the specific uh, extensive documentation that we have here. Uh, the blog posts and uh, what I showed here today, uh, as I said, this is just a crash course just to allow you to kick the tires, you know, but uh, we have all the details here and you know how Microsoft is uh, rich in terms of um, providing plenty of technical resources to developers. And, and there's a new uh, meetup initiative in Ireland. Uh, we have many uh, people in, uh, uh, in meetups participating here as part of Cloud Lunch and Learn sessions. OK, and in August uh, also I will be delivering sessions about uh, blockchain. Uh, the first one is pretty much the, the same one as here today, but the upcoming ones we will explore Quorum, for example, Hyperledger and also Corda. So you, if in case you are interested in that, please uh, remember to access it, cloudlunchandlearn.com. Uh, and not last uh, but not least, uh, as I said, it's beyond the scope, or, uh, the scope of, of this talk here today to talk about the specific protocols. We will explore that uh, as part of those sessions, but the one that I uh, talked and uh, also exercised here today is Quorum. So you can just go to docs.quorum.com and you will have all the documentation and you can also understand the, the entire uh, underlying uh, infrastructure and the architecture. OK, but uh, let's return now here to VS Code uh, just to see. Uh, OK, it's deployed now, so I can uh, just run it again um, and uh, try to. Yeah, retrieve a message here. OK, it's there. I can possibly modify the message again uh, in case I want. Uh, what is it? Node number two. Yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah. And I can set a new message. Um, yeah, and then retrieve it again. Yes. Well, this is a different one. Oh yes, because I'm targeting. Oh, this is really important. Yes, uh, because I've just created a new uh, configuration, so you need to change actually this uh, target network here because when you connect here, for example, remember when I showed you the Truffle uh, config JS file, only the local network was available here. But as soon as you connect, a new configuration is created here, and there there's a new, uh, a different ID here. Okay, but apart from that, uh, those are all the steps. And as I said, the the blog post and, and everything that I have here uh, as part of. Uh, this presentation here today, you can just go there and follow all the steps. OK, 
So the key takeaways here, as I told you, in case you want to implement a blockchain solution, simplify development, uh, get up and running quickly, you know, uh, and avoid all the hurdles considering the underlying infrastructure and the full governance that I talked about. Uh, it's a good idea to use a managed blockchain solution, and that's what the Azure blockchain uh, service is. And uh, not only that, we also have VS Code with the extension and all the code samples and all the tools. So that's the way to go. Uh, uh, I will be sharing the presentation with Nitin uh, later today. OK, so you can also visit uh, beyond the QR code. But in case you want, um, thanks a lot um, again OK, for the opportunity to present uh, uh, blockchain here today, the, the technology that I can say I'm passionate about. And I just want to give you one more opportunity to scan the QR code and uh, engage with the developers a newsletter as well as uh, access all those uh, comprehensive resources. Uh, but that's what I have uh, today. Uh, thanks and, a lot again. And thanks, Iris. Uh, so there is one question from Sentil. So if you yeah. can open the Q&A, you can find the question and if you can answer that, that will be helpful. Yes, let me have a look. Um, Yes, OK. Yes, absolutely. Yes, you can do that. Uh, as I as I said, you know, with the emerging technologies, it's it's tough to imagine uh, the number of different use cases and how you can innovate. And I've heard uh, at least of uh, I would say a dozen different solutions where they are combining machine learning and models with blockchain. You know, because you can consider the model as a digital asset as well, you know, as I explained. So there's no impediment at all. You can definitely implement that. Uh, and it is quite feasible. Uh, one thing, uh, because uh, blockchain, uh, for example, depending on the implementation, but it happens uh, with the public, the permissionless networks, we have some bottlenecks in terms of scalability and the time that's needed to actually uh, um, commit and, and finish the transactions. But with a permissioned approach, you know, as you can control the number of participants, for example, uh, because it's different when we talk about Ethereum or Bitcoin, for example, the the the, the chain size considering Bitcoin is more than uh, 200 gigabytes, you know, so that's why it takes time to, I would say, compute and append a new block and finish the transactions. But with a permissioned approach, when you provision a new member, for example, uh, depending on the framework, you are starting from um, block, what we call block zero or the Genesis block. You know, so solutions like, like Hyperledger, for example, and depending on your choices in terms of VMs, if you want to use GPUs and things like that, uh, you can uh, possibly achieve 3,000, 5,000 or even 7,000 transactions per second. You know, so it varies. So, but uh, for the design pattern uh, specific to AI and the models, uh, interesting to say it's not a good idea to store large files on chain, let's say a video file, or I would say depending uh, on the model format that you're talking about, because you have to remember that uh, the, there's a gossip protocol and the data is replicated so that all the participants in a given network, they can have a copy of that shared ledger. So one design pattern actually is to provide a kind of interaction. For example, uh, you can provide a hash or something like that, and you can externalize those files and store them. For example, you can use Azure storage or blob storage or something like that. Uh, and there's, of course, data encryption and uh, considering this data, sorry, the, this data at rest as well. So, and with that, you can preserve the, the scalability and, and also the velocity in terms of transactions, okay? Um, yes, I. I can see more questions. Uh, do you have anything from your end? Anything? Uh, no, I'm, I'm pretty much uh, for the interest of time. Th thanks, yours for uh, sharing all your knowledge. And uh, hopefully, we will have more sessions from you soon uh, or uh, who are uh, available from Microsoft to uh, give us more insight into these technologies, right? Thank you so much for your time and uh, giving us this wonderful uh, session. You are very thank welcome. You for joining. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.